Hey guys, what's going on? This is Pantar Dragon, and today we'll be doing a video on what champions to play if you aren't an AD carry main, as requested by some of you guys. And this video will be good if, say, you main another role and you have to fill for the AD carry because you're stuck with it, and you just don't know which champion to choose because, you know, you might not be familiar with this role too much. Or, you know, if you want to be useful because you'll probably be outclassed if you're playing AD carry and it's not your main role. So your main goal is to be useful or survive the laning phase. And so this video will tell you which champions to pick, which are usually utility and scale really good into the mid game or late game and I'll be giving you some pointers and tips on how to do the laning phase and of course some pointers for team fights. An example of a champion that's not going to be included in this video is someone like Draven because you know he takes a lot of mechanics, a lot of skill, and a lot of practice to be good at. So I think you guys understand what this video is going to be all about and with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so first up is going to be Ash, a really good champion to play at the moment, ever since her rework, and again, fairly easy to play. Scales really well into the mid game and late game because of utility coming from her ultimate to initiate, and of course the slow coming from her ultimate plus her auto attacks and volley. And she also has free clairvoyance with her E, so that's a lot of utility coming from her, and definitely she'll be useful even if she falls behind. She'd probably be my number one top priority when picking an AD carry if I had to fill in ranked. And how does the laning phase go for me exactly? And how do I do the laning phase exactly? Well, it's pretty easy. I use my W whenever they're in range of it and it's off cooldown. And since I do have a fairly long range, which is 600, I'll try to abuse that range and try and auto attack the enemy every time they get close to me. And basically trying to whittle down the enemy as much as I can. The only time I'd activate my Q is if we're going for a long extended trade because once it's up, I'll have more attack speed and enhance auto attacks because of that ranger's focus. And in most trades, you'll probably win the sustained fight since, you know, Ash does a lot of DPS. And then you use your Hawkshot to try and find an enemy jungler so that you can adjust your playstyle based on where the enemy jungler is. And you use your arrow whenever you think you can get a kill onto somebody. So that's basically how you play Ash in terms of, you know, the basics. Now let's talk a little bit about how to play Ash in team fights. Basically, you are the initiator, so you want to pick the good fights and try and snipe out an easy squishy target. So right here, you should kind of wait on your team to get in position to kill the enemy that you want to kill. And the follow up from your team should come onto him. And then your follow up would be to volley and use your auto attacks onto them. When you do get those five stacks, you do want to activate it for doing as much DPS as you can with Ash. You never want to use it when obviously you don't have five stacks because you'll be missing a lot of damage. And if you can catch people with your slow, then obviously you keep chasing going forward. And of course, try and dodge all CC if you can. But of course you do want to try and stay behind your front line since you are pretty vulnerable as Ash. And that's it for Ash, let's go on to Jinx. So Jinx is a fairly good AD carry once she gets into the mid game and late game, probably one of the strongest late game AD carries actually. And basically she's pretty good. So in my eyes, I feel like Jinx is fairly easy once you get the hang of her. For instance, you want to try and poke the enemy with your rocket since you do have bonus range. And in teamfights, since she has long range, she's fairly safe in that sense. So pretty easy. And you'd use your minigun to CS since, you know, your rockets do cost mana. But if you do ever get in range of your minigun, then obviously switch to it since you do get an attack speed bonus. The way to use your flame chompers is use it to change C with your ally or put it behind the enemy so that it does kind of zone them when you're going for those long trades. And then you'd use your zap if you're out of range of your auto attacks. If you're also getting ganked by the enemy jungler, try and put the flame chompers around your feet so that they have to run around these traps to get to you. As you can see in this clip, a pretty good example of how not to use the flame chompers when disengaging. And the way to use your ultimate is to finish people off off the map, or you know not in your distance, but usually you try and calculate where they're going to be, and then you just shoot it and see if you get a kill. Remember, it's a finisher, so try and use it to execute people, and not at the start of team fights. Now let's go over some team fighting with Jinx. So I feel like the biggest rule you should have in your head when playing Jinx in team fights is always use your rockets, never your minigun, because you want to be safe with the range. The only time you'd have your minigun out is of course if somebody is already in the range of your minigun and you can switch to it. The majority of the team fights will be used with your rockets for that safe range. And since your zap is longer range than your auto attacks, you can use it when the enemy is out of your auto attack range. And I feel the way to use your flame chompers is of course try to CC an enemy or set up a zoning area for yourself so the enemies cannot get to you. And again, the only time you'd use your ultimate is if you can get some kills with it. And finish people off and get those resets. Your positioning should always be behind your front line, and of course auto attacking the nearest enemy to you. Next up is going to be Corky. Fairly easy to me, maybe not to some others, but honestly to me, it's fairly easy. 
So the thing about Corky, why he's good if you're like behind, is because I feel like he does scale with levels. So once he does hit level 11, he has his you know missiles to do its base damage and do a lot of damage at that point. You don't necessarily have to be fed to be useful. So yeah, scale's good with levels. Anyways, it's fairly simple to play him in lane. All you have to do is throw a Q whenever the enemy's in range. Give an auto if you can. And if you're going for those long sustained trades, turn on your Gatling gun so you shred their armor and do more damage than them. Also, the general thing about Corky is whenever you're using him, you always want to use your spells in between auto attacks so that you maximize your DPS. Once you're level 6, use your rockets whenever you can poke him and hit him. And yeah, that's basically it. Just uh, use it whenever they're in range of your R. In team fights, it's pretty easy. Remember that thing I said about maximizing your DPS? Space out your spells in between auto attacks and you'll be maximizing your DPS in no time. And use your escape if you feel like you're in danger. And keep constantly auto attacking and throwing out missiles to the person who's in front of you or nearest to you. You do have pretty big bursts so you can surprise enemies if they go after you or if you want to take someone down. So remember your assassination potential is pretty high. But I mean if you're diving into the back line as Corky and going 1v5 then obviously your positioning is a bit wrong. Next up is going to be Sivir and I know she's a really good AD carry especially for solo queue because of her ultimate and a lot of utility. But I do feel like her laning phase is a bit hard personally since you need good reaction times with your spell shield for certain spells. And you gotta manage your mana a bit with your Q. Harder too because she only has 500 range as opposed to other AD carries. So what I like to do is concentrate on my farm, poke with my Q if I can't hit him. If I'm going for the trade, I'll use my W as an auto attack reset. But most of the time, I'll just try and survive and keep my farm up on Sivir. And then you'd use your ultimate to, you know, engage or disengage depending on how you want to use it. So yeah, basically if you can get a kill or if you want to escape. Next up is going to be some teamfight tips for Sivir. And first up, she is an initiator with the ultimate, you know, giving bonus movement speed to your team. And so, if you think it's a good fight, pop your ultimate and rush the enemy down. Then try and focus the enemy in front of you like always, use your W to auto attack reset if you can. Then pop your spell shield to block whatever spell that you think is a threat. It's pretty easy to position yourself up close to auto attack since you do have the bonus movement speed come from your passive and ultimate, so you can kite pretty good if needed. And if you still have your spell shield up, then you can feel safe and keep rushing the enemy down. In this clip, this is very situational where I just kind of ignore their front line and go for their back line. But that's because their front line isn't really focusing me, so I can just kind of ignore them. Next up is going to be Miss Fortune, who isn't really that popular right now, but I still feel like she's actually pretty decent. And she's actually pretty easy to use in team fights. So basically, as Miss Fortune, what you want to do is try and queue the minions and bounce it off onto the enemy. At least for poking. But if you're going up for a straight up trade, what you want to do is give them an auto attack and Q, and then if you want to go for more than that, then you activate your W. Since you do get increased attack speed. The only time I would use my E is to slow the enemy down and disengage, or use it to all in on the enemy, or if I combo with my ultimate. And I feel like the only time I use my ultimate is if all my cooldowns are down, or I can hit a bunch of people with my ultimate, or if the enemy isn't really in range of my auto attacks. In teamfights, it's pretty easy. I'll keep auto attacking and using my Q on people that I see, use my E to slow the enemies if they're in range of it, and then use my ultimate if there's a bunch of people clumped up for it, or they're out of range of my auto attacks. So I do feel like she's fairly easy to use in teamfights. Next up is going to be Kogma. And you know, he's kind of like Corky, he scales with levels, you know, the rockets, except, you know, his arcane barrage, which does scale way better than the rockets, and he has maximum percent health damage plus long range. So he's always going to be useful as long as he has a few items or levels. And he's fairly easy to play in the laning phase, all you really have to do is poke the enemy when your W is up, as you do have the bonus range, so you will be hitting them while they cannot hit you. And if you can get the E under them, then you know they're going to be slowed and take a lot of shots from you. But you don't want to trade with the enemy when your W isn't up since uh, you won't have the enhanced auto attacks plus you're at a lower range than the enemy usually since it's like 500. So yeah, straight up pokey poke 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 with your W, uh, kind of like Caitlyn. And when it's off, just try to farm. And you don't use your Q if you're going for those long trades or you need to put a skill between your auto attacks. It's only there just for like magic and armor shredding so that's basically why. Once you do obtain your ultimate, use it whenever you can to poke down the enemy. I usually put it slightly behind them, so they have to deal with either that or the poke coming from my W. And usually you do want to be using it at like 40 mana. Unless of course you're going all in onto them, then obviously you want to use it more for the DPS. And for team fights, it's pretty easy for Kogma. If you are going to fight and feel like you're going to be auto attacking a lot, you activate your W. But of course if you don't have the W before the team fight starts, then it's a bit of a problem. So if you don't have it up, tell your team to back off and wait for the cooldown when it comes back up. Then you use your E to create a zoning field so you get the enemies off you. 
And like in between auto attacks, you do want to use your ultimate onto the enemies since it is a very long range. And then when there is someone close to you, always try and use your Q to shred their armor and stuff so you do more damage to them. Your positioning should always be behind your front line unless you know you can take on the enemy. Then of course, go for it, but most of the time you will be behind your front line. Like most AD carries. And that's going to be all the champions for this video. And as you can see, all the AD carries in this video do scale very well into the mid game and late game. The reasoning behind that is because you probably don't know how to do a laning phase as well as your opponent since you do not main this role so you might as well make yourself useful by having utility or your damage gradually goes up by levels. Hey guys, so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy this video, maybe you'll enjoy general tips for solo queue and climbing the ladder right up there or picking a champion and champion select to fit your team comp right up uh, well it's kind of in the same place on my finger, but it's going to be right there too. So again, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe right there to join the No Pants Party, and I'll see you guys next time.